Amen. Let's just give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. <laughs> Greetings, saints, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm just doing this on behalf of the pastor who is not here. He had to just travel again, so he asked me to do this on his behalf. So we just like to welcome each and every one in the great uh, master's name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we know we've got a lot of visitors tonight. So we just want to welcome you to uh, our, our uh, service. Uh, well, we call it a special service when we, we uh, posted it. And uh, the deacons gave, us, uh, gave me a list of, of we have quite a lot of pastors here as well tonight. So we want to individually acknowledge them as well. If you may be seated just for a short while. So uh, in no particular order, we just want to welcome uh, Pastor Monty Ramlo. Pastor, if you can just stand for us. Just want to acknowledge him in the house and his wife. And then uh, I've got Pastor Michael Mohammed. Pastor, welcome. And then uh, Pastor Gideon Retief and wife. Pastor, welcome. And then I've got uh, Pastor Ivan Martin, if you can just stand for us. Welcome, sir. And then uh, Pastor David Gonzalez, so he just had to leave again quickly, but we just want to welcome him in his absence as well. And then I've got uh, Pastor Bernard van Rensburg. Pastor Bernard, welcome, sir. And then I've got Pastor Mark Fisher. Marco Fisher, God bless you. Amen. So we know we know time is fast spent. We want to give enough time for the word. So we just wanted to, uh, you know, we, we as a family had met Brother Ron, I think in 2016 in Germany. And uh, we've been Facebook friends kind of since that time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in the 16 meetings that we had there, we used to kind of sit diagonally across from each other. So we didn't have a lot of time to really fellowship, but we had a lot of time to greet each other over 16 meetings. Amen. God bless you. So Brother Ron, I think he's known to many of us. I think his ministry is worldwide known. You know, he's, he's got a deep revelation when he preaches, and, and, and uh, I think he's got a teaching ministry. I think at least that's the way I see it. Uh, so we want to appreciate Brother Ron for also just, you know, availing himself tonight. Again, like I said, on behalf of Pastor Raymond Thompson, who's not here. We just want to, you know, uh, welcome him. And, you know, if the pastor was here, he would normally say this. He said, now, we all know Brother Ron. Because we were with him before the foundation of the world. So as we welcome Pastor Ron to the pulpit, we just want to, Pastor Ron, give you, uh, uh, rather welcome you. And uh, may you come and preach whatever the Lord has laid upon your heart. May we just stand, let's sing a song there, Kev, as we welcome you. Brother Ron, God bless you, sir. Walk with to God be the glory, hallelujah. So we'd like to invite you all to stand as we begin to read on the word that we have for tonight. My subject for today is uh, the restoration that was brought to us by the message of the hour. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we'd like to read one scripture, hallelujah. By the way, I thank uh, Brother Thompson for his confidence and uh, his invitation, his trust, to be able to minister to the saints in this side of the world. Amen. Amen. We'd like to read, praise God, in uh, Joel. Hallelujah. Joel 2.25, before we pray. It says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing for the reading of his word. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you. Yes. Your most holy present, Father. We know that without you, Lord, we can do nothing. Yes. We surrender to you our hearts tonight, Lord. Yes. May you come and fill our hearts with gladness. Yes. May you answer every need, Lord, and get the glory for yourself tonight. Amen. Open our eyes of understanding once again, Father, that we may benefit from the preaching of the word, Lord, that we may see ourselves in the open book, Lord God, that we may also, Lord God, understand your perfect will in the last days. 
Lord, cleanse us and forgive us of our shortcomings. And may you just uh, heal the sick, Lord, whatever needs they have tonight, Lord. You know their hearts. You know your people, Father. And Lord God, may you just come and anoint your word, Lord. Hide me, Lord God. It's not about us, Father. This is about you, Lord. For you are the word made flesh again in your bride, Lord. Bless your people, Father, as I commit to you all glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. God bless you. You may now be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. So I would like to speak about restoration. And I believe uh, there was a restoration that took place in our age. Because we know Malachi 4, Revelation 10, Luke 17, 30. We, know, we all know these scriptures. But if we look at uh, the word restoration, it means a return to something, uh, something original. To a former normal or unimpaired condition. I believe we were all born sinners. Is that right? Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fell short of the kingdom of God. But in Romans 6.23 I believe it says For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through His Son Jesus Christ. Amen. So we need to be restored back. Because restoration means restitution of something taken away or lost. Yes, and it also means the act of renewal or revival or reestablishment. Oh, you know, the, the prophet told us that uh, we were in Christ even before the foundation okay. of the world. And just we were, we were just born here with spiritual amnesia. Yes, we, we never knew who we are. Yes, Originally, amen. Because why? We were born in this world. And we thought we are earthbound. We were, we, were, we were chickens, but we are not chickens. We were eagles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We realize who we are because there was a voice in the last age. In the Laodicean church age. Amen. In Matthew 25, there was a cry made. Hallelujah. In the evening time. And Jesus offered us three things. He said, buy of me gold. And then... Buy of me robe of righteousness and buy of me eyes of that your blindness be taken away. Hallelujah. So Brother Abraham said in the quotation spiritual amnesia, we will just go through quotes. We know we have one messenger and we have no message of our own. Amen. We just get it from the prophet. We stay with the tape teaching. Amen. He said here, but the church today, hallelujah. He said, uh, God has got a bad case of spiritual amnesia. It doesn't know where it belongs. It's forgot all about it. Forgot all these things that makes it a church. And then he said, in another quotation, he said, Hallelujah, in the exposition of the church age, if the people, he said, get the true revelation of the true church and what she is, what she stands for and what she can do, the, that she can do the greater works yes, she will be an invincible army yes, praise the Lord yes, that's the prophecy that's going to be fulfilled in our age yes, amen the bride of Christ yes, the prophet said we are the, ma- the word made flesh again today we carry the message yes, the prophet has been taken off of the scene amen. Moses our Moses is gone yes, and then the Joshua ministry has come through the fivefold ministry, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Calling out the last predestinated seed in our day. Amen. So we move on with another quote. He said, Adam, what did we lost? Okay, he said, Adam lost his inheritance, the earth. See, we were supposed to be heir of everything that Adam had because he was the original son of God. And he said, now it passed from his hand to the one he sold out to, Satan. He sold out his faith in God to Satan's reasoning. Therefore, sorry, his eternal life is his right to the tree of life, his right to the earth. He forfeited every bit of it to the hands of Satan. He passed it from his hand to Satan. Hallelujah. So that's what happened in the beginning. We know Eve was deceived. But Adam was not deceived. The sin of Adam was iniquity. He knew that it was wrong to partake with a fruit. But because she loved Eve so much. Amen. She partook of that that fruit which we know it was not an apple. Hallelujah. 
It was uh, the fruit. We are the fruit of our parents. Amen. Hallelujah. We were not supposed to be born by sex. The original man, Adam, was taken from the earth with, with Eve in him already. Hallelujah. And, and the first decision of God is always his, his decision. But it was destroyed because we know. It was his permissive will so that he could become a savior. Amen. Amen. He allowed man to commit sin. Because in the future, he will come, hallelujah, as our Jehovah Savior. So what happened now? Let mo let's move on. Thank you, Jesus. He says, Adam lost the right of that book. He forfeited it when, she, when he listened to his wife. Eve. She listened to Satan's reasoning in the state of the word of God. It was forfeited. Then it couldn't go back in the, the, into the dirty hands of Satan who tempted her out of the way. So therefore it went back to its original owner. Praise the Lord. The book is in the hands of God. The book of redemption. The Lamb's book of life. And it was sealed with seven seals. Hallelujah. See? He said, goes right back to its original owner, and that was God, the creator, who made it, and, and he holds it. Praise the Lord. So what happened now, I, I, I came up with a little chart here, the restoration of the book. Amen. It, we know that Adam forfeited it. And it went into the hands of Satan, but, you know, Satan's dirty hands cannot hold it. So the, the prophet said it went back to the hands of the original owner. And Daniel saw the book. And he was told to shut up the words, yes, to seal up the book. Yes. Until when? Until the time of the end. That's our day. Hallelujah. Praise God. It will be open in this day. Hallelujah. But before it could be open, amen, Jesus, the second Adam, has to pay the price. Amen. He has to redeem the names in that book. Amen. He was wounded for our transgression. The Bible said he was bruised for our iniquity. He was made sin who knew no sin. In order for us to, be, to become the righteousness of, of God in him. So the second Adam, hallelujah, had an Eve in himself as well. And that Adam, that word is the word bride. That part of Christ. That's got to redeem, to restore. Hallelujah. Not, la not only the first man and woman. So in Revelation, we saw that John, we read that John saw the seven seal book. Yes, sir. And the Bible said, there was no man worthy. Amen. No man worthy to open the book nor to lose the seals thereof. Yes, Hallelujah. And John wept, the Bible said, because everything will go to nothing. But he heard a voice. Hallelujah. And a voice said, weep not, John, for the lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. Hallelujah. And when he looked, he didn't see a lion. What he saw was a bloody lamb because it was a mediatorial work. Brother Brown said, said he could not be a lion until the last bride, the last elect has been found. And... And brought up to the pluck of God. Praise God. So he will be a lion to Israel. Because he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when the rapture took place. Then he will become a lion. To the 144,000. The son of David. Hallelujah. Amen. But he comes in three sons names. Son, son of man. Son of God. Right now. The Holy Ghost dispensation. And then he will come as the son of David. So when the Lamb opened the book and opened the seals, what happened in Revelation 10, there was a mighty angel coming in a form of a cloud. Coming down in 1963 with an open book. With a little book open. And what happened? Seven thunders uttered their voices. Amen. To wake up the bride. And those seven thunders, Brother Abraham said, are the mystery truths contained inside of seven seals. Amen. That when you receive the revelation of this, amen, you will receive the new birth. You will receive 
the, 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 the virtues you, you will receive the new birth. Hallelujah. And so the seventh, the mighty angel was Revelation 10, 1 to 6. But he gave it to his messenger in Revelation 10, 7. In order that this open book, this Bible has become a new Bible to us. All the loopholes has been restored in the days of the voice of that seventh angel. When he shall begin to preach to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. There will be no more questions. Amen. Everything has been answered. Everything. All the, 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 the uh, previous uh, doctrines, you know, that the people did not understand has been now dovetailed by the prophet of Malachi 4, 5, 6. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Do, do you love the Lord for sending a prophet? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So he said in his quotation now, 1965, trying to do God a service, he said, but now is bride calling. Yes. Now is when the seven seals has been opened. Now when the complete things that the reformers left has to be opened and only Malachi 4 yes. can do that. Yes. Not the theologians. Yes. Amen. Yes. Malachi 4, it takes the revelation straight from God to an individual to do so. Yes. It cannot come to a group. So this is not a Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran revelation. One man. Hallelujah. One man. God, that's what God promised in the shadows of the coming of his bride. An Eliezer. We know the ministry of Eliezer in the Old Testament. Abraham sent him to find a bride for Isaac. And he went to find Rebecca. Hallelujah. And we have an Eliezer in our age. You know, Eliasar prayed about it. Yes. And, uh, and he had jewelries and gifts. And, uh, you know, he, he gave it to the mother and to the father. Yes. Or rather, mother and brother yes. of Rebecca. And that signifies, you know, the mother Catholic Church and the brother Roman Catholic Church. They were given the gifts. They could now speak in tongues. They could now have miracles. You know, they could have missions now. But Rebecca was taken out of that family. You know. Hallelujah. Through Eliezer. And while she was being taken to Isaac, though she never seen Isaac yet, but Eliezer was trying to build up Isaac to her. And he would say, he is a gallant man. He is a rich man. So he, she fell in love with Isaac on the way to her bridegroom without first seeing him. And that's what's happening to us right now. We are falling in love with Jesus. Though we never seen him in flesh. Yes, but because there was an Eliezer, brother Branham, preaching to us. Our bridegroom in our age. We fall in love with him. And John said, even so, Lord, come quickly. That's what the bride is saying now. Amen. Amen. We want to go in a rapture as soon as possible now. Praise be to God. Amen. And then he says in the first seal. And the members of his bride, their names were put in the Lamb's book of life. Before the foundation of the world. But it's been sealed up. You see? And now it's being revealed whose names were in there, all about it. What a great thing, the prophet said. So when the open book, the seals were opened, our names were being called now. That's why if your name is not there, you will never see this message. But if your name is there, no matter where you hide, the Lord will look for you. He will find you. He will seek for you. Amen. Amen. It's not our problem to be saved. We were always saved, the prophet said. Amen. All we have to do is to hear and recognize. Hearing, recognizing, and obeying the word of God in our lives. So we thank God that our names are being called. See, we did not choose him. The, the apostles, he told the apostles, you did not choose me, but I have chosen you. So you cannot be in this message unless God predestinated you. Chose you in Him before the foundation of the world. 
Hallelujah. That's our common denominator. We may not know each other in name or in, uh, you know, in race, but we have one common thing in us. This message, we have received it. And we are one family. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So now we move on to what Peter said. He said we must, you know, be established in the present truth. Because we cannot just stay in the past truth, you know. In every age, there's a fresh manna. Amen. Amen. So Peter said, I will always put you in remembrance of these things. Though you know them, but and be established in the present truth. So what is the present truth now? Here Brother Branham said, in the restoration of the bright tree, there was four dead messengers that killed the, the tree. The bright tree. You know, the original tree was on the day of Pentecost. That was the original church. Yes, but he said, he said here, palmer worm. This, is our, this was our text a while ago. Yes, locust, sir. canker worm, caterpillar. Is that right? Four messengers of Roman devils. Dogma killed the tree. Oh my, hallelujah. So that's why denomination is a mark of the beast. Because they added dogma. You cannot add to the word. You cannot take away to the word. Unless your name be taken out of the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. So he mentioned Roman devils. So we see the four horse riders. The prophet said, these are the same Satan. He is the same Satan in, this, in different stages. You know, in the, the seven church ages, there was uh, the age of deception. The Nicolaitan spirit came. Then the persecution of Christians came. And then there was famine, which spiritual famine means, you know, the Catholic church had, had uh, charged money for prayers, novena, indulgences. And now we are in the pale horse rider. All colors combined, yellow, or rather white, red, and, and black is gray. But God's power cannot be defeated. Amen. Hallelujah. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the prophet said, God will raise up his standard. Hallelujah. God sent his four creatures to counter every age where this horse rider was. So we thank God that in the days of Paul, there was the spirit of the lion, boldness. Paul said, if even an angel come from heaven, Amen. That preaches another gospel than what we have preached. Let him be a curse. Amen. And during the dark ages, there were given the, the spirit of an ox, the beast of sacrifice, so that they can, they can uh, you know, uh, be able to take the, all the punishment without, without, you know, without uh, getting discouraged. They were all smiling even though they're being burned at stake. They were burnt, fed to lions. Amen. So, and then when Luther and Wesley came, it was the face of a man. Amen. Power of God. Amen. Amen. Intelligence smart. Yes, sir. They expose all the, uh, the wrong doctrines of the Catholic yes, Church. Sir. Yes, sir. See, he wrote 95 theses. Luther did. He was formerly a Catholic priest. Yes, and then now, praise God, because, yes, amen, we will go in a rapture. Yes, amen. Yes, we are given an eagle anointing yes, by the Lord. Yes, amen. Yes, Hallelujah. One day we will go home with the Lord. We will meet him in the air. Amen. At the last trump. Amen. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain in the message shall be caught away together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. Paul said. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And so we see that with these four creatures, the seven messengers was sent, were sent through all, through all these four different stages of the palmer worm, canker worm, caterpillar. See, in order to bring the truth. Remember, in every age there was a conclusion that says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Amen. There's no more eight messenger. We're only given six, seven church ages. Seven messengers. The next is the coming of Jesus Christ. 
So we don't look for any mighty man or any revelated new revelations. Amen. We must get ripen only in this message. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because false Christ and false prophets will come. To deceive the very elect if it were possible. Amen. So we would like, to, we want to stay with the unadulterated message of this hour. Praise the Lord. So let's move on with the quotation. We know the, 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 the names of the messenger. If we have visitors, somebody, probably uh, the deacon can give you a book. Amen. Amen. And so you know all the messengers. Yes. Now we just run through this so that we don't take too much time. It says in uh, Restoration of the Bright Tree, one took its fruit, one took its leaves, one took its bark, one took the life. Is that right? Four messengers of dogmas killed the tree, all but the roots. So, praise God, there was the roots that remained. And so what was love? The prophet, the prophet uh, made it and clarified it to us in this message. He said, Four termites in one, the same insect, just different stages along come the palmer worm. What did it do? First thing, it took the fruit, brotherly love, yeah. off of it. See, what's the fruit? You know, the first church age, Ephesus, what was the complaint of God? Yeah. You have left your first love. Yeah. Praise God. So, on the next, it come another worm, come around. It says, uh, praise God, eat up the joy. The leaves, the fellowship. So, you know, when a tree, you know, it has a shade, it's, it's good to fellowship under the shade of the tree. So, Satan took away that fellowship and broke, you know, introduced, you know, politics in the church. You know, put up all the uh, Nicolaitanism, Balaamism system. Praise God, man over man. So, praise God, the fellowship was gone. And then he said... He eat, the next was, he eat of the bark, the canker worm. You know, the bark is the protection yeah. of a tree. Yeah. Praise God. And the protection of the church has been eaten. Yes, sir. The Holy Ghost, you know, was not able to work yeah. completely with the church. Not yeah. until today. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And the caterpillar, the last one, sucked the life right of it. Hey. But thanks be to God, there was some roots underneath. Yeah. Hallelujah. The original. He never touched that. Praise God. And you, so you see that four stages of the ancient. We now, he said, I will restore the Lord. That predestinated root. Amen. All names. All them names that was before the foundation of the world. He said, predestinated will come to me. All that he foreknew, he called. All that he calls, he justifies. All that he justified. He has glorified. Hallelujah. So if you're predestinated by God, God will call you. Yes. Amen. It's not your problem to be saved. Yes. Praise God. God will make a way for you. Yes. He will use some people. He will use anybody. Yes. Amen. He, he even used, uh, you know, the uh, donkey for Balaam. Yes. He can use an animal. He can use a crow to feed an Elijah. To bring you the message in your home. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So within 2,000 years, we knew that within the 2,000 years of Christianity, yes, praise God, it started with apostolic faith and then came the insects, the Jezebel doctrine, you know, Hinduism, all the isms, Anglican, Baptist, Methodist, Wesleyan, yes, yes. and then Pentecostalism was the last one, the New Age movement. But praise be to God, in our age, yes. there will be a new branches, yes. new original leaves will come. And new fruits will come. And that will be, the, the Omega Bride will be the same as the Alpha Bride. Amen. The same life, the same power will be with the Bride of the last days. Glory to Jesus. So I have a little chart here. You know, the, old, the Pentecost movement lasted for 30, rather 20 years. AD 33 to 50. And then came in. The locusts would destroy the fruit, as we have discussed. And then the canker worm destroyed the leaves. Yes, Praise God, which is uh, the bloody persecution of the Christians. And then the caterpillar destroyed the bark, which we know that was the papacy, yes. the Nicene Council. Yes. It 
thought uh, you shall be saved by works. See? So, and then the fourth one was the palmer worm, the dark ages. It took the light. Because the Bible said, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground, it abided alone. So it went back under the ground, it died, but there was a stock. The prophet said, the stock was Luther. Hallelujah. Came out with justification. And then, praise God. See? The next one was tassel, sanctification. By Wesley, John Wesley. Amen. And then before the seed goes back to its original condition, there has to be a shock. Amen. A shock. The shock will not be will not be air with the seed. The prophet preached that. And we know the shock are the Pentecostals. Amen. They have the gifts, but they didn't have the giver of the gifts. Hallelujah. Brother Branham mentioned about Azusa, Azusa Street uh, Revival, 1906. It was spearheaded by William J. Seymour. Yes. He was a one-eyed, 34-year-old son of a former Negro slave. So the gifts came, the restoration of the gifts, healing, miracles, see, and uh, speaking in tongues, visions, and prophecies. But you see, they didn't have the fullness of the word. See, the fullness of the world came through the messenger of Malachi 4. He shall turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. See, the Pentecostals can jump and down. They can rejoice. They can sing. When the music is playing, they're so uh, elated, they're so happy. When the, but when the music stops and the pastor preaches, they fall asleep. See? Praise God. And then they'll wake up, wake up again when the music starts. But the bride's revival is not music. It's the word. It's the full word. That's our real it, revival. Hallelujah. It's the word itself. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we continue. I have seven key scriptures here that I want to discuss. That discusses or pertains to restoration through the message of the hour. And then we will close. So seven key scriptures. And one of them, praise God, is Luke 17.30. Amen. When, even though, when the, thus shall it be. In the day when the Son of Man is revealed. We know that the Son of Man means a prophet. And it will be a ministry before the rapture. That there's going to be a prophet. That God will send to display his first pool, second pool, third pool. Showing that he's the same yesterday, today and forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Branham said, Jesus comes in three sons' names. He said he comes first as a son of man, a prophet, to redeem his bride. Then he comes second after Pentecost as the Holy Ghost, son of God ministry, to cast away, of God, uh, of, to cast away his bride at the end of the seven church ages, the rapture. And then after the tribulation and Armageddon, there will come Jesus again as a son of David to reign with his bride. On this earth. To rule the nations with the rod of iron. Amen. Three sons name. Prophet, priest, and king. Hallelujah. So, but before the rapture. Amen. We know that there's going to be a son of man ministry. Jesus will use a human being. Amen. A seventh grader. You know. You know. The foolishness. You know, to... to you know, to destroy, you know, the wisdom of this world. He chose somebody who, who's not even, a, you know, a theologian. See? Praise God. Amen. So, Brother Branham, just like Jesus, manifested the first book. He had healings and miracles. Amen. He also had second pool. He, dis he had discernment and prophesied. He prophesied about, you know, the, the sinking of Los Angeles. And there were seven visions given to him. In 1933. And then the most important thing is the third pool. The revelation of the mysteries contained in the seven seals. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, 
Jesus did the same way. Yes. He fed the people. He fed the 5,000. He healed the sick. That was the first pool. Yes, and many followed him just because they, they were fed. Yeah. See? They were healed. But it doesn't mean that you, you are healed in the meeting that you'll go in the rapture. Remember, there were 10 lepers who were healed, but only one went back and said thank you to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Lazarus was raised up from the dead, but he died again. See, it has to be the soul that's most important. So Jesus had 70 ministers aside from the 12, remember. And then he, he, said, he saw that there were too many. He said, I'll try them. He gave them the third pool, you know. He said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. He never explained it. And he said, we will drink his blood. We will be, we will be vampires in Draculas. We will eat his flesh. What will make out of us? We will be cannibals. Oh, let's, let's leave this group. We, this is a cult. This, this is nonsense. Hallelujah. So they could not see. The revelation of Jesus Christ. That his flesh is his word. And it is, his blood is the atonement of the cross. That will cleanse every sin of his sons and daughters. See? So in John 6, 66, it says, And from that time on, they walk no more with him. Oh my. And there were 12 and he told Peter, Are you, are you, uh, are you leaving also, Peter? And Peter said, where, where shall we go, Lord? Thou alone hast the words of eternal life. Praise the Lord. Though they never understood what he meant. But they believe it's not what you know, but it's who you know. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the third pool ministry, Brother Abraham said, also include the preaching to the lost. We could be preaching to the lost now. Just like in the days of Noah, the ark was closed. But there were seven days that it, it didn't rain. So we could be preaching to the lost now. Maybe we're complete now, but we're just, you know, the Lord is just ripening the seed. For people to hear the message so that there will be no more excuse. Amen. Just like when he, Jesus went to the souls in prison, he preached to the lost. And he said, the third pole will also be the speaking things of ex to existence. When the squeeze come, we will speak like squirrel, squirrel. If you cannot buy or sell, you can speak your food, fried chicken on your table. Amen. It will come, brother and sister. Amen. The fullness of the manifestation of the third pool will come during the squeeze. Just like in the book of Acts, you know, they sold everything they had and they, they, they joined together. You know, Ananias and Sapphira never remitted their money, so they died. Yes, sir. So that will happen one of these days. Yes. You know, the mark of the beast will soon come. And prop, the prophet said they will close all the churches. They will boycott us if you don't join the World Council of Churches, which will go back to Catholicism. Yes. Praise God. But I believe that will be the time when the third pool, you know, the sons of God will be manifested. The sons and daughters. We can speak to the tree, just like Jesus spoke to the fig tree, and it, it uh, you know, it, uh, it was, uh, it died, you know. So we will have the same power, I believe, that the world will see that these message believers are the true anointed sons of God in the last day. Hallelujah! We will be vindicated by the Lord Jesus. So let's move on. We have some scriptures about the Son of Man ministry. In Luke 17, it says, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. We have a lot of fast food now, McDonald's, KFC. People are eating and drinking, marrying. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Oh my. They were caught unaware because they never listened to Noah. And then as it was in the days of Lot, it says in 29 and 30, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. 
See, we are living in, so, in a Sodom condition right now. And what is noticeable in the days of Sodom, there were three messengers. Two went to Sodom and one remained with Lot. Is that right? Amen. Hallelujah. And Brother Branham mentioned about Billy Graham going to the evangelicals. Oral Roberts to the Pentecostals. But one messenger who stayed with the bride, the elect, the Abraham seed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh my. Hallelujah. This is not a coincidence. And he mentioned about the, the, the ham. He said, Graham is six letter word. It hands in ham like Abraham. But Branham is seven letter word. Seven, seven, seven. Hallelujah. Perfect number. It's not an accident. God saw it before. Even that name of our prophet messenger. So they're all gone now. So what's next? The fire falling. Amen. Israel is looking at their blood moons and everything. See, but that we will not see those because before they get their, their Moses and Elijah, we will be gone in the twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God, the prophet said, God will not deal with Israel and the Jew, or rather the Jew and the Gentile at the same time. He dealt with the Jew and the Samaritan when he was here, remember? There was a Syrophoenician Gentile woman saying, Lord, can you heal my daughter? He said, I was not sent to dogs. We were dogs. We were pagan. Hallelujah. I was only sent to the Lordship of Israel. But after they rejected the Messiah, Paul went out and went to the Gentile. Hallelujah. To look for a bride for Jesus Christ. Amen. The bride will not be the Jews. They will just be our servants. Eunuchs, attendants to the bride. In the millennium, in the new heaven, new, new heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Oh, what a special bride you are. You just don't know your privileges. You're special in the eyes of God. The bridegroom died for the bride. Hallelujah. Woo, praise the Lord. Now, number two, Malachi. It speaks about Elijah. We know this is twofold. One is John the Baptist. See, behold, I will send you light as a prophet before the coming of the great. The great day of the law was during, you know, John the Baptist's time. John the Baptist restored the heart of the fathers, the, 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 Le the Levitical priesthood, back to the children which are the apostles at that time. But the second Elijah will, will, uh, be, will be coming before the great, or rather before the dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the heart of the children. We are the children. And the fathers are the apostles. Apostles. The apostolic fathers. Say, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So we know we had that ministry. The Elijah ministry. Under the prophet's ministry. We know we have five comings of Elijah. I'll just go through this. See, there was Elijah the Tishbite. Then Elisha received the double portion. Then John the Baptist. And Gentile prophet of Malachi and Elijah to the Jews. That will be with Moses to call back the 144,000 to the same message that we have received. The prophet said they'll be, they'll be born again. They will be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ as well. They will not join the World Council of Churches. They won't even join the third temple building because they have to go back to the real paschal lamb sacrifice not the animal but the, the the lord of lords and the king of kings amen praise god here's a quotation brother branham said once more god will reveal the truth as he did to paul in the days of the seventh messenger in the days of the laodicean church its messenger will reveal the mysteries of god as, as God revealed, his, uh, revealed to Paul, he will speak out. And those, listen, who receive that prophet in his own name will receive the beneficent effect of that prophet's ministry. Hallelujah. And they that hear him will be blessed and become part of that bride of the last day who are mentioned in Revelation 20 to 17. The spirit and the bride say come. Oh my, praise the Lord. Aren't you glad you're part of that bride today? The bride is one in a million. 
999,999 will miss the message because you're one in a million. You saw the message because God has opened your eyes. Praise the Lord. Let's move on. So we know that Brother Ranham was commissioned by an angel. In 1933, during that uh, baptism on Ohio River, there was a voice from that pillar of fire that said, As John the Baptist was sent to Furan, the first coming, your message will Furan, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we had a, a picture of the pillar of fire. See, the only supernatural photograph that was taken by a mechanical camera is displayed in the Washington Hall of Congress of Religious Arts. Hallelujah. The same pillar of fire that Moses met in the burning bush. The same pillar of fire that came down on the day of Pentecost. The same pillar of fire that wrote the Ten Commandments. The same pillar of fire that Paul met in, on his way to Damascus is here with us tonight. Hallelujah. He's here with us. Amongst those people that's baptized with the Holy Ghost. You have your lick of fire tonight. And the devils, when you walk in public, the devils are afraid of you. Because they can see that pillar of fire inside of you. Jesus said, you can cast out. In my name, you can cast out devil. In my name, you shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. We were given that authority. Power. Hallelujah. That Jesus had. Amen. Is with us right now. We are the word made flesh again today. All that the father had. He poured into Christ. All that Christ has. He poured into the bride. Amen. Praise God. Let's read some more. You know brother Branham had uh, five people. Who were dead. That were raised again in his ministry. And he said in the times of Jesus. There were only three. Because in John 14, 12, it says, Greater works you shall do, because I go unto my Father. Cancers and all manners of disease were healed through his prayers. The blind were made to see, the lame were made to walk, the dumb was made to talk. And then he had the second pool ministry. Seven visions were given him in 1933. And only one, the last one, is the thing that we're waiting for. The sinking of Los Angeles and the destruction of America. Remember Lot, or rather Abraham saw the burning of Sodom before the promised son came, before Isaac came. So we might, we might see, you know, these things. But remember, when Jesus rose up from the dead, he, when he was resurrected, there was a great earthquake. And uh, the, the rocks rent and uh, the, the, those who, who are dead rose up. And there was 40 days that Jesus ministered unto his disciples. He was in his resurrected body. But uh, he ate, he still ate, you know, fish. So at the time of the rapture, we will have the same glorious body like Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you can pass through all, you can appear and disappear. So we will have the same powers, the same character that Jesus Christ had. We will turn back to a young man and woman. Let's read some, some quotations after this. Okay. The third pool ministry of Brother Ranham includes, you know, the revelation of the seven seals. He had a vision in 1962, December, and he told it in his message, Sir, this is the time, that he was being sent to the West, to Arizona, to wait for the revelation of the seven seals. And we know that this cloud, I believe, was taken, praise God. Brother Ranham explained to us that this cloud was formed when seven angels you know, left him, but gave him the, the, the commission to preach the seven seals in his church, in the Branham Tabernacle. But you see, this, this cloud was, was published in Life Magazine and in, in Science Magazine, and they didn't know what that is. It says 26 miles high. I talked to one pilot, he said, uh, wh what we can do is we can only reach 20 miles high Beyond 20 miles, it's already outside of the Earth's atmosphere. So 26 miles high is, is beyond the Earth's atmosphere already. And it's a 30 miles across. They couldn't explain it. But let's listen to Brother Ranam. The voice told him, turn it sideways to the right. See? And the very picture of that seven angels being lifted up 
Turn it to the right hand side. There is the face of the Lord Jesus. Looking down to the earth again. It showed that Jesus was judged. There's a white wig that they used to wear in England as a judge when you've got supreme authority. You see the headstone, the appearing of Christ. See, the, the headship is looking for the body. Where is the body? It's here. The body is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. What's next? You know, in the Bible, Jesus, when he ascended, there was a cloud. In Acts chapter 1, verse 9, there was a cloud and they saw him no more in that cloud. But you see, we see the cloud now. What's next? The corporal body will soon come. Amen. He said, it's, listen, this angel come down from heaven. He comes down from heaven, clothed in that pillar of light, cloud with a rainbow. And a rainbow is a covenant. He said, it was Christ with one foot on land and one on the sea and swore that time will be no more. He, he said here, it was our Lord up there. Praise God. You see, he is the one who opened those seals. He's those seals. For the whole world of God is Christ. Amen. Christ is the seals that one opened. What is the opening of the seals then? Revealing Christ. And the very seven angels which represented the seven church ages was all completed and we couldn't, we couldn't even see it. They, did, they took the picture, not us. Oh my. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, I had a little background in computer. And you know, Brother Branham always had that, uh, that Hoffman's cloud, uh, painting, you know. Yes, yes, yes. I tried to place it on top of that and it, it fits exactly. So, that's the head of Christ that the prophet was telling us. So, it's a fulfillment, I believe, of Revelation 10. Mighty angel coming on a cloud and then a little book open. Which we know the seals were opened. And it says, uh, when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And then it says here, and the seven thunders had uttered their voices. I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. In the time of, of John, it was sealed. But in the time of Brother Branham, it was unsealed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's a quotation in the bridge. He said, the seven seal book is revealed at the time of the seven thunders of Revelation 10. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. See? Yeah. So if the seven seal book are revealed, the thunders have sounded. Let's, let's hear what are the thunders. The, hallelujah. See, he said in, 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 in Laodicean churches, now this messenger of Malachi 4 in Revelation 10, it's going to do two things. One, according to Malachi 4, he will turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers. Two, he, not any other man, he will reveal the mysteries of the seven thunders in Revelation 10, which are the revelation contained in the seven seals. Praise God. It will be this divinely revealed mystery truth that literally turned the hearts of the children to the Pentecostal Father. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah. The seals was the covering. The mystery truth was the thunder. The symbols were horse riders. But the mystery truths were that it was Satan in different stages. Hallelujah. When the peep seal opened, we just saw souls under the altar. But when the mystery truths, the thunder mystery, it was explained to us that they were those six million Jews that were killed by Hitler, Mussolini, and Stalin. See? When the sixth seal opened, it revealed to us a tribulation. When the seventh seal, that half hour silence happened, we knew that no angels were worshiping in heaven. No singing because Christ came down. He was descending with a voice, with a, with a shout, and with a trump of the archangel. 
Praise the Lord. And the prophet said, he does all three things while he is descending. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue, my brothers. Hallelujah. Number three, Revelation 10, 7, the seventh angel ministry. You know, if you look at the Bible, you know, in the time of Moses, papyrus was discovered because he needed paper to, to write, you know, the five books of the Old Testament. In the time of Luther, the printing press was, was invented by Gutenberg, you know, to, to print more Bibles. In, in 1933 to 47, the tape recording was invented <laughs> to record the voice of the seventh angel. Hallelujah. In the days of the voice, we're still living in the voice of the seventh angel. When it shall begin to sound, this mystery will be over. Now it's in MP3. In, it's in, on the internet now. Printed different forms. Why? We have gone into the, into the astronaut age. And we know that one day we will leave this world behind. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So we'll just go pass through that. Okay. The prophet said, are you looking for a last sign? What is our last sign? Would, be, it, would it be this eclipses that's happening now? He said, let's read this. Listen, do you believe me to be his prophet? I haven't confessed that before. I believe I stand with people who understand and know what I'm trying to get to you. He said, you will never receive another sign. This is it. Does it the Lord? Would a prophet of God make a statement like that if it wasn't true? You are receiving your greatest sign and your last sign before the appearing of Christ. A prophet is the last sign. Praise God. Oh my. And God took him home because why? People began to worship him. Trying to worship him and God could not share his glory with anybody. See, he must decrease. And Jesus must increase in the bride. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, okay, we're into number four. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It means that all the power, we have the potential now because to prove that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, you shall do also. So healing is only the children's bread, you know. So we can do greater things in our age. The prophet said we are potentially, you can create your own world, your own atmosphere and live in it. You know, praise the Lord. Praise God. The same power. Okay, listen to this. The deity of, Christ, of Jesus Christ. The prophet said, but that same power that spoke the world into existence is in those people that's got the Holy Ghost. Oh my. Praise the Lord. That's right, men and women, it's time we found out who you are. The devil is trying to hide you back, telling you that you're some little trot down something. See, you are not, you are sons and daughters of God. The deity is not in heaven, it's in you. Oh my. It's in us. The mercy seat is in us now. Whosoever you bless will be blessed. Whosoever you curse will be cursed. Oh my. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Now working through his bride. See, even if someone does hurt, harm you, he said, Jesus said it's better for him to be, you know, you, to be uh, hung with a rope and put a stone and thrown in the depths of the sea than to offend these little ones that believe it in me. Oh my, praise God. That's the love of Jesus Christ for us. Here's another quotation. Hear ye him. He said, The life of Christ will produce the works of Christ. Will produce the faith of Christ. Amen. Will make you act as Christ make you love him. He will be first in your life. Can we say amen? Your objectives, your motives, and everything will be altogether different. It will be for the glory of God. Not men. God. We have nothing to boast. We have nothing. Amen. To be proud about. We're just sinners saved by grace. Amen. Even Brother Branham said that. Hallelujah. 
So number five, we're almost done. We're number five. These are just seven scriptures. First Thessalonians 4.16. It speaks about restoration, a body change. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, with the trump of God and the dead in Christ. You know, from Pentecost through the seven church ages shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air. He will not come on this earth because it's still dirty. It has to be burned in the Armageddon. You know, he's, he's got to wait for us in the air. So, and so shall we, be, we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with his words. Now, Brother Branham explains to us about the shout. He said, uh, three things happen. A shout, a voice, a trumpet has to happen before Jesus appeared. A shout. Jesus does all three of them when he is descending. So it's a process. What is a shout? It's the message. Going forth first, the living bread of life, bringing forth the bride. So it's the message, the shout that brings us together. And then after that, what? He said, the voice. Therefore the message calls the bride, and then the same morning with a loud voice, he scream out with that shout, the voice woke up Lazarus. Amen. With a light voice, uh, Lazarus came forth and the voice wakes up the sleeping bride, the sleeping dead. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. One time Brother Branham said that the bride will be the final voice to the final age. Yes. We are the voice of many waters. Yes. That voice is in the bride right now. Yes. Under her messenger. Yes. Amen. She will be the final voice. Yes. And as we preach, and as we preach, the five Paul many preach, one day the, race, the dead will raise. Yes. From the grave. And then after that, the trumpet. He said, the next is what? The trumpet. A voice, a shout, a trumpet. Which always was the feast of the trumpets. Is calling the people to the feast. And that will be the bride's supper. Where? The lamb supper with the bride in the sky. Hallelujah. So one day we will leave everything that we have. Amen. Everything is just temporary. Your job, your car, your house, your family, they, have to be, they must be born again too. Because there will be two in a bed. One will, one will be taken, one will be left. See, it's an individual affair with Jesus Christ. And then he said, uh, the theophany. Have you heard from your theophany? Yes. Amen. He said, the theophany comes to the earth to pick up the redeemed body. And if you're here in the air, you take the body to meet the theophany. There you are. And caught up to go to meet in the, the Lord in the air. And then there's another quotation. He said, uh, But when that body, a kind of celestial body, when it returns back to the earth, it picks up the substance that it once lived in. You know, the 16 elements, those who died, their body will be, you know, assembled again. That body is the one that we will see the Lord Jesus in His resurrected body. Praise the Lord. We'll make it quick. He said, there will be a blast from heaven. One day, there will come a blast from heaven. The dead in Christ shall rise first. These old mortal bodies change and made like unto His own glorious body. What a parade that will be when it starts heavenward. In some of these days, in that rapturing time lays ahead, all proudly displaying the blood of Jesus upon their chest, the message of God in the hour that they live in. That's the hour that we're looking forward to, brother. See, he said, we will come back to a young man and woman. See, the whole thing, there will be a resurrection, a rapture. And away it will go before it ever go up to meet him. By faith, I believe, it in His grace that we will be among those people that will be caught up. Do you believe that? Are you one of them? Yeah. Hallelujah. He said if there will be 50 that's going, I'm one of the 50. There will be 30, I'm one of the 30. If there will be 10, I'm one of the 10. There will be 5, I'm one of the 5. If there's going to be one, that's me. And believe the same way for yourself, He said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Look, these mortal bodies will not see death. 
But just of a sudden, there will be like a sweep go over us and you're changed. You turn back like Abraham from old man to a young man, from an old woman to a young woman. Hallelujah. We will be restored to a young, young body. See? Barbara met them, remember? Yes. On that uh, curtain. Yes. Beyond the curtain of time. Yes. They were embracing him, saying, Our precious brother. And there was one sister that was 18 years old. And the boy said, That, that sister was 96 years old when he, she received your message. See? What did sudden, say, sudden change? After a while, you're traveling like a thought. You can see those then who are already resurrected. Oh my, we will see Brother Ranam. Amen. What an hour will gather with them and then be caught up with them together to meet the Lord in the air. I believe if you lost your hair, God will restore to you a new set of hair. If you lost your teeth, God will give you a brand new teeth. Hallelujah. Remember Jesus, when Jesus came to the two disciples walking in the Emmaus, they never recognized him. Why? Because he turned back to a young man. They only recognized him when he broke the bread. Oh, that was our Lord. And then he disappeared. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, there will be a sudden change. Jesus, the prophet said, Jesus' corporal body will come down. Not just the cloud. We don't believe that that cloud was the rapture already, as some believe. They say that that was the rapture, and they're raptured now. They're now in the millennium, so they're in their glorified body now. Some, some people are teaching that, you know. So they're still, they still uh, they, their, their hairs are still gray. They have glasses, and they buy the medicine at the you know, pharmacy, and they say they've been in rapture already. Oh, my. We're waiting for the corporal body of Jesus Christ. The corporal body of the Lord Jesus Christ sitting on the throne of God. That body will rise from the throne again. He will come back to the earth. And when he does, every spirit that's born again will come back to a corporal body, young man and woman, and live forever in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I tried to look for a quote where we will see Brother Branham because uh, I, I see... I, I thought I must support that, you know, with a quote. And here he said, in expectation, the angel screams forth the voice, the trumpet sounds, I want to come out from among the dead. That's what he said. I hope to see you all there. He said, hallelujah. Amen. How I would like to take each one tonight, sit down and talk for you, with you for hours. That's almost impossible for me to do that. But listen, but I will make an appointment with you. Praise the Lord. Woo. And by grace, I will keep it. We will meet him one of these days. We'll knock at your door. Brother, it's rapture time. Woo. We will see Paul, Mary. We will see Peter in their young bodies. For they without us cannot be made perfect. They're waiting upon the last seed now. So that we can be complete. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Oh, don't you love the Lord? That He predestinated you to be part of that rapture. Amen. He said, if you'll make it with me someday, when it's over, let's sit down by the rivers of life. Over there, and we'll just talk a thousand years with each one of us. Just talk over the old things. Oh my. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he said, but the rapture is a revelation to her. See, the true bride of Christ will be waiting for that revelation of the rapture. Glory to Jesus. Amen. We will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. This mortality will put on immortality. And this corruption will put on incorruption. That's the greatest event that we're waiting for. Not a boxing event or a soccer event. The body change is the greatest event. That we need to prepare for. Hallelujah. Amen. Number six. We're almost done. The sixth scripture that I want to focus on is Matthew 25, 1 to 13. There were ten virgins. And in Matthew 25, there was a cry. At midnight, there was a cry, a shout made. See? He said, uh, uh, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. See? And trim up your lambs. Go ye out to meet him. 
and ten virgins. See, were there, but five had oil and five had no oil. Five were wise and five were foolish. What's the difference? What is the oil? The prophet said the oil is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a type of the Holy Spirit. So we need to have the oil in order to go to the rapture. Or else we will be left behind. Amen? Hallelujah. And how do you get the oil? Through Acts 2.38. Hallelujah. See, Brother Branham called this this eternal prescription. It says, repent and be baptized in the name every one of you. There's no exemption. In the name, not in the titles of Father, Son, Holy Ghost anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ, we will be Mrs. Jesus Christ. Not Mrs. Baptist or Methodist. You have to take the name for the remission of sins. Because the name remits your sin. Amen. If you're still baptized in the title, you still carry your sins with you. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. You will be the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will seal you until the day of your redemption. Amen. Ephesians 4.30 Verbanam explains about the seal. You know, in a product like a mineral water, if you buy something without a seal, that means it didn't pass in the quality control. If you buy something that has no seal, it's dangerous. There might be poison in there. The same thing for a Christian. You need the seal of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grip not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed until the day of your redemption. The body changes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe, I believe we have been baptized by the Holy Spirit. When you heard the word, the evidence is when you receive the message that was sent for the day that you're living in. Amen. Praise God. And the evidence of the Holy Ghost is you have the virtues. You have the fruits of the Spirit flowing upon you. Amen. By their fruits you shall know them. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Brother Branham said, a seal means three things. One, security. Second, ownership. Third, completion. Hallelujah. You're secured. You're owned by God. The devil has no more right to you if you're sealed. And you have completed the stages of justification, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you're now into adoption. Hallelujah. Oh, don't you love the word, my brothers and sisters? The promises of God. It quickens our soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Here's some quotes, just one quote on the foolish virgin, and then we'll move on. He said, the sleeping virgins had to go through the tribulation period for purification. See, she had to be purged of her sins of unbelief and rejecting the message. These people have been message believers before, but they rejected it. Oh my. And they were left behind. And when the marking of the beast comes, they know that the mark of the beast is is to be doomed. So they will not get the mark. So they will be purged. They will be tortured. See? They will say, oh, if, if I could have believed this message thoroughly, you know. But they become lukewarm. They become dilatory. See? That's why Jesus said, be zealous and repent. See? Praise God. Take of me gold. Try in the fire. See? Buy of me. Hallelujah. Of Isaac. See? Be zealous and repent. Them that I love, I rebuke and chasten. So she says here, now she's not the bride, but it's the church. Pure people that didn't have the opportunity to receive the message or in some way that they were blinded by, their, by these false prophets. They didn't get a chance and yet they're really sincere in heart. And God knows their heart and here they'll be purged during the tribulation period. So, hallelujah, we don't want to be left behind, my brothers and sisters. You just don't know what will happen in the tribulation period. Even if you have money in the banks, and if you're left behind, you cannot buy, you cannot sell, unless you have the mark of the beast. It will be useless. See? And the, the tribulation period will be the purging of nature. All the earthquakes, intensity 9 will come, all the tsunamis, all the volcanics will erupt. And praise God, you will look for death. 
You know, the Bible said, and you, will, you won't find death. See, maybe you have a cancer and, and you want to, to jump over the building because you want to die. When you, when you drop down the floor, you're still alive like a zombie. You know, you cannot die. Eight months before they die. Praise God. So, praise God. Hallelujah. I believe this is a time to be serious. No more playing church because I believe any time now. Israel is 70 years now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Trump has already awarded Jerusalem as their capital. Oh my. And the, the Christians, the Zion, you know, the Messianic Jews, they have now their denomination there. They're waiting now for the Messiah. But the Messiah cannot come until we're out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, Brother Branham said the seventh trumpet is the coming of Moses and Elijah. And that will also be our last trump. See, the last trump will bring us up and bring down Moses and Elijah simultaneously for Israel. Praise God. So, we're closer. We're later. It's later than we think, my brother and sister. Amen. So, Brother Branham was asked, is there a bride ministry today? Sure. That's what's going on right now. The bride ministry. The bride of Christ. The message of the hour. Says she's consists of apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. See? Not just tapes. There's a fivefold ministry. A live ministry. To perfect the bride for the edification of the body. Amen. He said, she's got a ministry. Sure. Great ministry. It's the ministry of the hour, but it will be so humble. We will not have TV programs, you know. The third pool is not a public show. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's only for the elect. Hallelujah. We'll be so humble. Hallelujah. But pool of power, full of glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, as I've said a while ago, Revelation 10 is threefold. See, the bride ministry is Revelation 10, verse 8 to 11. The mighty angel came down in a form of a cloud. That was verses 1 to 6. Then the open book was given to the seventh angel of Revelation 10, 7. And after Brother Branham was gone, you know, John types the bride. The angel told him, get the book and eat it. Take it and eat it. And it will be sweet in your mouth, but bitter in your stomach. And now we took the open book. We ate it. It, will, it was very sweet. You know, to share with one another, but it's so bitter because a lot of persecution comes with it. But in the last scripture, it says, Thou must prophesy again. Thou must declare this message again. Where in, in, in all the nation, let's read that last statement then. Thou must prophesy to declare this message again before many peoples, nations, and tongues, and kings. That's the last verse of Revelation 10. And we're ful fulfilling it right now. After Revelation 10 is Revelation 11. Moses and Elijah, how close are we? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, the seventh seal was opened in 1963 during the fourth seal. Because the fifth seal, we know, it's the, the uh, souls under the altar. Tribulation is the sixth seal. But the fourth seal started to open here. And will continue until the millennium because the, the seventh seal is the end of time. The end of the struggling world. But it's the coming of the Lord. It will be the coming of the Lord for the bride. And then the coming of the Lord for Israel. And then the coming of the Lord with the bride during the millennium. Praise God. Hallelujah. So now we, we move now to the last scripture. I don't want to, to uh, make you stay too long. So it says, let us be glad, not be sad. Amen. And rejoice. Hallelujah. We can shout and rejoice because we have the revelation. And give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife hath made herself ready. The scriptures call us wife now. Why? Because I was thinking about that. What's the difference between a bride and a wife? And it came to me that a bride is a spouse, is engaged. When we came out of the denomination, we were engaged. Spouse to Christ. But when you made a vow, 
You married yourself. I receive you as my Lord and Savior, as my husband. You are the bow marries you to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then you, be, you begin to eat, you to eat, to partake of the word. And you become pregnated with the word. That's why the scripture can call you wife. Because we're going only to a reception. The wedding supper is just the reception. The wedding has to take place here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are being married now to Jesus Christ. She is Him. Hallelujah. You have that code. She is Him. Hallelujah. But some people, you know, misinterpret that. That you can now be, you know, you can now be a worship. No. Only the masculine can be worship. But the feminine cannot be worship. She's the one that worship the masculine. The Jesus Christ. Our husband. And our bridegroom. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Let me quote now some of the restoration and then we will close. We have been restored from death unto life. See? For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. We never lost eternal life. We only lost the right to eternal life. But now it's been restored by the second Adam. We have been restored from, praise God, from lies to the truth. The truth shall set us free. Amen. Amen. We've been restored from bondage to freedom. Hallelujah. We were in bondage before. And Paul said in Galatians, Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But Branham said, You never sinned in the first place. Hallelujah. God is looking at your theophany. It's sinless up there. See? prophet said it's in the sea of forgetfulness you never did it you were accused of it by the accuser but really from the beginning you were predestinated to be a son or daughter of God you're standing there there washed and your old book of divorcement put away and is dead absolutely out of existence even in the mind of God God could not remember justified means more than forgiven when you forgive somebody, you can still remember their sin when you see them. But when you're justified as though you never seen in the first place. That's the bride, the bride of Jesus Christ. He said, how did you come to do this? You were deceived into it. By your first marriage. Yeah. It was our first parents' sin, not ours. See, it's no fault of your own. By your natural birth, you come after Eve who committed adultery. That's the reason you was born an adulterous. You were a sinner to begin with. That's right. You was deceived into it. No, it ain't your fault. Oh my. You never did it because that little germ, the germ of life that was in you was to be you before the foundation of the world. God put your name in the Lamb's book of life. Praise the Lord. Don't you love him, my brothers and sisters? Let's all stand. And give him, praise God, our praise. Give him our worship, the best of our songs. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord, for the restoration. Thank you for redemption, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the second Adam, Jesus. Hallelujah. Giving his life at Calvary to redeem his bride, to wash her. And to purify her. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Let's just sing a song. You know. That... Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father. Lord, without your message, what would we be? We're so grateful for your grace in this hour. Lord, for that restoration. That same seed that fell in the ground in the beginning. Coming back to the church here at the end time, Lord. It's none other than you yourself revealing life back in the place of death. Coming to your bride, Lord. And without you, Lord, we could never be fruitful. We could never bring forth that which was needed in this hour. Lord, all the restoration of the other ages could never produce a rapture. 
But Lord, you said in your word that you would come down yourself amongst us. You would bring the word that's needed for this hour. You would bring that word of life that would restore us back to the faith, Lord, that we lost in the beginning, that would bring us back to an obedience to your word, that would bring us back, Lord, to a reflection of your own nature, Lord. And we recognize how with our own selves we could never do that. We could never achieve anything, O oh God. But by your marvelous grace, you spoke to us in this hour and you sent a ministry to us, Lord, to reveal to us the Son of Man, that which was never known in any other age, that which could never be looked at, that which could never be seen. You unveiled it, Lord. You tore the veil away and you welcomed us to come into the very awesome presence of Jesus Christ. And we appreciate you tonight, Lord. We appreciate the restoration of your word. And Lord, as we listen tonight, we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you that these scriptures that we saw our brother read tonight, that they are fulfilled in our day, that we see these things in manifestation. Lord, I pray that you will bless our brother Ron, Lord, as he has come tonight to share from his heart. May you strengthen him, Lord, and just bless him abundantly, Lord. And we just want to say we thank you, Lord, and we glorify your name. Hallowed be the name of Jesus Christ. There is none like you, Lord. And we just want to say we appreciate your word tonight. Ask that you will go with us, Lord, as we go to our homes. May it not just be another message we heard, but may it affect our life, the way we live. Lord, the joy we express to this world, the manifestation of the life of Jesus Christ reflecting through us. Keep us on our journeys, Lord. Take us to our homes by your blessing, O oh God, and watch over us all. Lord, we look forward to the rapturing of the church. We look forward to the going home. We look forward to our new bodies, Lord. And we know very, very soon we shall have it because this is the promise of your word. And we believe it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen and amen.